Hi friends, I am the Cyber Haggis and welcome to Haggis Command, otherwise known as my hobby room. Now my goal for this channel when I first started it was just to have a bit of fun and maybe hit 100 subscribers before the end of the year. But here we are, it's not even the end of September, we've hit 100 subscribers. Fantastic. I hope you've been enjoying my videos, I've really been enjoying making them. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my spooky dark fantasy scenery for cheap. So stay tuned, like and subscribe for more. Talk to you in a second. A big thank you to the Cyber Haggis for that lovely introduction. He really is a handsome and relatable chap. You may remember from one of my previous videos that I made this bone strewn wasteland, but I've also been making other various bits and pieces for my dark fantasy game, Bloodmore. Now, most of these pieces cost me almost nothing to make. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take you through each of them individually maybe in pairs where there's some where there's some crossover and I'll just show you how I built them, what pieces I used and how you can build them for next to nothing. We'll get the two most expensive ones out of the way first, just so you don't think I'm lying to you. So I've built some ancient ruins, some entropic ruins, and the main component of these are elements of Hearst Arts molds. So these sections, the pillars and the major pillar on this one and all the ruin and stuff are made from Hearst Arp mold pieces. So if you're not aware, this is a Hearst Arp mold. And basically what you do with that is you place some plaster. I use dental plaster because it's a bit harder. You can use plaster Paris, but it does tend to crumble a bit more. And you let that dry and it comes out looking a bit like this. So that is what you get out of that mold. And I build them up and smash them to pieces. Now, <laughs> these do cost a bit of money, but once you've got them, you've got them. You can then use them and use them and use them. Eventually the mold is gonna degrade, but you will get your money's worth out of them. You can see here as well that on the base of these, I've got some sort of flagstone patterning. And what that is, is wallpaper. So you get this sort of patterned wallpaper and you can get rolls of this for practically nothing. And that just sticks on the bottom and you get that lovely sort of flagstone effect. Paints up really nicely. And I've just used the usual bit of sand a static grass and some of my patented swamp mixture. As I said, those are probably the two most expensive pieces simply because the outlay for the molds is greater than all the rest. But taken over the long term, the molds will last you ages, not really costing you overly much when you spread it out like that. Next up is probably the next most expensive piece, but probably my favorite skull of a dead god and just to give you an idea this is the size of this there's scully standard 28 millimeter miniature looks really good on the table now the prime component of this obviously is the skull and what this has come from is a tacky ornament from the local supermarket it's just on this stand as you can see you can't really get that in shot it's on this tall stand and the skull itself looks really cool. And as, far, as soon as I saw that, I thought that is getting turned into a piece of scenery. The chain is just some jeweler's chain from a local hobby shop. A good six, 12 inches of that cost me maybe a pound. The skull itself cost a fiver. Then it's just got all the usual basin bits and bobs on it. One thing you might notice on this is I've got some sort of misty stuff coming off it, and that is just cotton wool. I've uh, just teased out. You can get it looking sort of thin, avoid all the clumping. It looks like sort of mist coming off the moorland. Really nice effect. As I said, that's probably my favorite piece. I had a lot of fun making that. And it's become the channel's mascot, as it were. Next is this ruined building. 
So as you can see, I've got a lot of brickwork on there. I've got some wooden piece of the door. The brickwork are these foam bricks. Now I bought mine, I got them from Fire Dragon Games. If you've got a good foam cutter, you can just make them out of normal XPS foam. To get that sort of battered, bashed look of old stone, what I've done is I've taken some rolled up tin foil. You basically just take your piece and as you can see at the moment it's fairly smooth. You just give it a bit of a rub with the tin foil. And because it's got an uneven rough surface, it gives it a sort of old battered up stone effect, which is really cool. The wood component, literally, cocktail stir, uh, cocktail stirs, coffee stirs. Um, now I bought these, I bought a thousand about three years ago and I've barely dented the box, even though I use them all the time. I guess if you were feeling particularly untrustworthy, you could get them from the local coffee shop for free in some manner. I'm not suggesting you should. The posters are just bits of paper that I've painted. And again, I've got the mist effect. Oh, I've got some static grass and things. The most expensive component of that is the foam bricks, but you can buy hundreds for like five quid. Doesn't cost a whole lot amount of money. These next two pieces, well, you've already seen me do a video on the bone strewn wasteland. And if you haven't, feel free to go back and take a look at that. Like and subscribe at the same time. But I've also got this tunneling horror creature bursting from the ground, ready to gobble up Scully and his mates. Now we are coming up to Halloween, so this is the absolute best primo time to get bits and pieces for these dark fantasy settings. So the tunneling horror originally was a Halloween piece. It was for some reason a scorpion that had a human-esque uh, exoskeleton, which is bizarre, but there you go, it's Halloween. Doesn't have to make sense. And the uh, Bonestream Wasteland was these plastic dinosaur pieces that I got for 10 quid and I got a huge box full of them and I could probably make another eight or nine of those bone stream wastelands out of the pieces that I got from it. So when you're in the store next time, when you're doing your big shop, have a look around the Halloween section. I guarantee there's going to be bits and pieces that you're going to go, ooh, that'd make lovely scenery. This piece, I've made an entire ruined shack with just the coffee stirs. I really enjoyed making this one. I've got made a little bookcase in there, kicked in door. Somebody's been dragged down into the cellar. You might notice what I've tried to do is have cobwebbing. Now that's a really nice thing to do. It looks really cool. And how I've made that is I've got some dryer sheets and they just look like that and what you have to do with them tear a chunk off of it you can see already it's sort of fluffed off at the edges there and if you sort of tease it out it's a surprisingly tough material and then you place that on your model you can see you can see it's already sort of given a nice cobwebby look to it you place that on your model with a little bit of glue and tease it out into these sort of strands you get that nice cobwebby effect an entire box of them cost i think 90 pence i don't think i'm ever going to go through them all to be perfectly honest with you and they make cyber haggis command Smell of a lovely lavender flavour. And now onto the final two pieces. I've had to move the camera back a bit because one of them's so tall it's hard to get into the shot. So let me just show you. There's Scully. And that is the Tree of the Dead and the Bonfire. So the Bonfire. 
try to make it look like it's burning and smoking. So I've just used cotton wool again for that. And then the tree of the dead. So I've got the gibbet hanging there. A load of skulls, some chain and stuff. So the main component of these is from a tree called a budlia or butterfly bush. So let's see if we can get some of that in shot. Now I've got one of these in my garden and they grow like absolute stink. You can hack bits off them until the cows come home. The chances of you killing it are pretty minimal. I trim it back every year and get absolute tons of lovely bits and pieces for the scenery. So as you can see, those huge logs on the bonfire are literally just pizza, but pieces of bud layer that I've cut off and then strategically snapped. And the whole section of the Tree of the Dead is literally just one big piece of bud layer. The other bits I've used in it, I've used some matchsticks to make the gibbet. The chain again is just some of that jeweler's chain. The skulls are from uh, frost grave sprue. I've got some cocktail sticks and stuff on there. And again, I've got a bit of mist coming off it, static grass, and that bit of stone on there is literally just some cork floor tiles. Cork, cork floor tiles are one of my favorite pieces to use because they go so far you can get a pack of I think nine or ten of them for about nine or ten pounds so you can build entire buildings out of them and I use them quite a lot for you know broken up paving slabs or pieces of rock and stone. I hope that's demonstrated that you can get nice looking scenery onto the table for not a lot of money. The most expensive single component in all this scenery is the skull and that cost five quid. Everything else, the uh, XPS foam bricks, the Hearst art mold pieces, the coffee stirrers, the bones for the wasteland and the burrow in horror. These all cost you money, yes, but you're going to have loads of them and it's going to take you a long time to go through any of it. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to get back to making more of this scenery. Remember to like and subscribe for more of this. Take care and we'll speak to you soon.